What if our planet is a living organism? Have you ever wondered about that? Even the ancient people believed that the Earth was alive. There's a lot of evidence of that. Mother Nature, Mother Earth, these are the names our ancestors gave it. The hunter who struck the wildfowl asked for forgiveness from the Earth and from the totem of the killed animal, while subconsciously realizing that, by violating the natural balance, he may soon die himself. It is strange that this knowledge has gradually disappeared from public awareness, and modern man behaves with his own planet in a very inconsiderate way. We grow plants in order to feed them to animals, and then cut up the cattle and preserve them in cans, and there are many such examples, but in the end, it all comes down to this. No matter what humanity does, our first concern is the satisfaction of our own needs, and this can be considered quite normal because every species on Mother Earth functions according to the same laws. But what if human beings are also being used for some kind of benefit? What if the Earth created us for its own needs? In the 1970s, the mind-boggling Gaia hypothesis was put forward, formulated by British ecologist James Lovelock. The hypothesis caused a lot of controversy and categorical rejection by some representatives of science. The principle is named after the ancient Greek deity who personified the Earth, the mother of all life. Some scientists put forward the Medea hypothesis as an opposition to the Gaia theory, another mythological figure. This woman, who killed her own children, was compared to the Earth, whose excessive activity repeatedly caused the deaths of millions of people. According to Gaia theory, the Earth appears as a superorganism with its own metabolism and respiration, it is proved that planet and processes occurring on it cannot be completely stable and in balance. But at the same time, for millions of years, the conditions on the Earth do not change dramatically, remaining acceptable for humans and animals. A logical conclusion follows from this. The planet is capable of self-regulation. What does it mean? Self-regulation is one of the properties of living organisms. Judge for yourself. If a person is cold, he gets chills. When they're hot, they break out in a sweat. When you feel sick, your body signals it by raising its temperature. In moments of excitement or physical exertion, the heart beats faster. Thus, the body defends itself and comes into balance. This does not surprise us and is considered normal. But when it comes to the Earth, which has inexplicably been relatively stable for so long, it is all about physical laws. James Lovelock in 20th century, as well as James Hutton back in the 18th century, suggested that the perfect Earth organism, akin to the human body, responds to external and internal factors by stabilizing them for its own survival. Due to continuous chemical reactions, the level of salt in the world's oceans, the thickness of the ozone layer and other parameters cannot be constant. The Earth simply optimizes them for itself. Our planet breathes through fractures in its crust, its heart beats, revealing by rhythmic fluctuations in the magnetic field. So the blood of the planet is the vast oceans. It did proven that life without water is dead. The skin is the crust, and geophysical rhythms are the Earth's pulse. In addition, it is believed that the Earth may communicate in a peculiar way with other objects of the solar system by means of points conditionally connected in the Hartman grid. It turns out that our planet is not just a living, but also an intelligent entity. Do you believe it? You can challenge the ambiguous statement under this video. Anyway, it is worth remembering the new sphere, the brain of the planet, its information shell. Lucky people who have access to this global information repository become geniuses ahead of their time for many years ahead. Moreover, according to Vernadsky's statements, 
It is mankind that shapes the appearance of the Earth, actively transforming its characteristics. Or maybe the Earth itself has created people for its own purposes. Controlling us at the level of subconsciousness, as the science of geopsychology says. Although judging by the behavior of people, the planet's plan was not perfect or out of control. Most likely, the Earth is well aware of the creatures swarming on it and tolerates their presence for the time being. We do not listen to the works of science fiction writers for nothing because Arthur Conan Doyle in his story, When the World Screamed, was one of the first to come up with the idea of a living planet. True, the writer claimed that the Earth did not suspect the existence of people on its surface. Let's divert from fiction and answer one more question. What benefit for the last decades mankind has brought to the planet? The answer is obvious, none, only harm. The emergence of intelligent life has transformed the planet beyond recognition, but we're cutting down forests of which there's only 30% left. We pollute water bodies with factory emissions and oil waste. We're turning fertile land into useless garbage dumps. Cars don't ozonize the atmosphere and broken gadgets don't clean, accumulating in millions of tons. Our brightly lit cities and tall buildings disorient birds, killing them or dramatically altering their migration patterns. A legitimate question arises. How long will the planet tolerate this attitude? Here it is worth giving an example. Mankind is well aware of the existence of ants, cockroaches, bees, locusts and other animals, peacefully neighboring with them until a certain point. But if some species begins to threaten our comfort or security, people go on the warpath and the purpose of destruction is not the whole species. Only a local area is cleared of its representatives. If we recall history, the planet has used preventive disinfection more than once, including defense mechanisms against overreaching mankind. Then, the Earth was shaken by powerful cataclysms. Terrible pestilence came. Deadly wars were ignited. This is how the Earth dialogues with people. But will we hear it? Global consequences of changes on our planet can be very serious for the existence of mankind. That's why we are human beings, so that we can comprehend in advance the scale of consequences and realize what makes us exist. Each of us must realize how important it is to take care of it, because at the moment it is the only home, the only place in the universe where we can enjoy the wonderful opportunity to live. At least, for now, it's the only one. Now that you've seen the whole video, which means it's time to click thumbs up under this video and subscribe to the channel. After all, you too have questions that are unanswered and give you no peace of mind.